And there it is, the tropical moisture streaming north into Texas. Let's take a look at that on the surface map. Out there in Texas, we've got dew points rising to the 50s. That's quite a change from a couple days ago where dew points were in the teens and 20s. Clouds invading from the south with that moisture return. And out to the west, we can see the appearance of a dry sector driving this dry line from Abilene down to the Big Bend. Further out to the west, cold front. Strong push of cold air coming from the Great Basin area, linked up with this Canadian system. And that's given us this push of cold air advection into the Great Plains and the Southern Rockies. You can see some evidence of that Canadian front right there, the leading edge from about Canadian Texas over to about Las Vegas, New Mexico, and back towards around Breckenridge, maybe Leadville, Colorado, certainly in the mountains, and they're getting some rain showers in that part of Colorado. In the plains of Colorado, we got north winds, temperatures falling off into the 40s and even the 30s, and as you go north, we pick up 20s and teens. 10 degrees there up at Minot and some snow coming down at Bismarck. Didn't quite catch that with the pen coloring. Yeah, we'll get that next time. High pressure on the east coast, 1028 millibar high right there. That's helping to support the return flow into the Midwest and Texas. A few showers up there in the Great Lakes. And let's take a look out in the Pacific. Moving out into that region, we find high pressure off the California coast, but going a little bit further north, here comes another weather system heading for British Columbia. The precipitation fields already invading parts of Vancouver Island up into southeastern Alaska. Looks like that's sparing Vancouver so far. And then further up north in Alaska, cold. Still continuing that pressure gradient coming from the Arctic ice pack down into the Gulf of Alaska. And temperatures falling off very sharply in the Canadian Arctic. We're now seeing widespread below zero conditions, some minus 20s, and even a few minus 30s, like up there in Eureka. Don't know if you can see that, but there it is. A quick check of the Arctic ice pack shows that it has filled in very nicely. Much of the Arctic Ocean Basin filled with that pack ice. That means we can support the development of widespread polar air, which, given the right upper level flow, can advect southward into Canada. And even Canada can support some polar air production as well. So the net effect of that is a widespread area of potential development of polar air masses. So we're definitely heading into winter. And then just a quick check out east into the Atlantic. Powerful system out there in the Sea of Labrador down to Labrador itself. That's partly due to this fetch of deep tropical air coming into that region. And then the isentropic lift over this warm front. That's helping to support some mixed precipitation in the Goose Bay area. And then that becomes rain down into Newfoundland and off Nova Scotia. Atmospheric rivers have been a major problem over the past few weeks, especially in British Columbia, Vancouver. They've been really hard hit by flooding. The next river is coming into British Columbia as we speak. Got 500 to 700 values of integrated vapor transport and you get further out into the Pacific and it goes up over a thousand, which is enormous. That's not saying that's going to actually come inland, but it is lurking out there. And as we roll the forecast forward, looks like the hardest hit area is going to be Vancouver Island, especially up towards the north part. Then it kind of ramps down overnight but still some impressive values coming into the Salish Sea area, which is basically Victoria, Seattle, Vancouver, and 
as it uh, continues moving east, that will kind of drop into the Columbia River Basin for Friday. There it is right there. And here comes round two coming in from the Pacific. So just kind of a string of wet tropical systems heading for the northwest. This one has a little bit more of a south punch into pretty much directly into Vancouver. So here we're talking about Saturday into Sunday. Let me just look at these values. Looks like there is some blocking there by Vancouver Island. So the west coast is going to be taking most of the brunt and then some of that will be coming inland there. And wow, there's another one offshore. Yep, that's got some impressive values up over 1400, which is higher than anything I've seen since I've started looking at these products. So that's a huge fetch of tropical air. Let's see if that makes it. Yeah, there is going to be some shielding by the islands and the coastal ranges, but still that's hitting the very same area, Seattle and Vancouver. So that's certainly bad news. As far as records, nothing to report for today, tomorrow, or Friday, but Saturday we're going to be seeing ridging on the west coast, and you can see those temperatures coming up to 84 at Burbank and 66 in San Francisco. And for Sunday, we're going to be breaking records for the date, Glasgow, Helena, coming up to near 60, and we're going to be tying records from Portland to Burns, Oregon, and over to Sheridan. Some very warm conditions there. And once again, 80s in Los Angeles and near 70 in the Bay Area. So let's break that down using the 300 millibar chart. We can see that uh, there is some blocking in the Atlantic right there. There's Greenland. There's the Atlantic. And if we roll that forward, yeah, that's definitely a block. That's somewhat of a, a mega block to be exact. And that's keeping the flow locked up upstream in North America. So it's going to tend to be troughy there in the eastern U.S. and some ridging on the west coast. But it is very energetic out there in the Pacific. You can see that jet south of the Aleutians, 160 knots, and that works its way eastward across the Pacific. And even though there is some long wave ridging on the west coast, we do have quite a bit of energy feeding into the Pacific Northwest into British Columbia, and that's enough to bring the atmospheric rivers directly into that region. Going into the first week of December, continued with a lot of energy out west on the west coast. And it looks like we're finally starting to break up that block there out in the Atlantic. And this is kind of a progressive pattern. Number of waves across the hemisphere, looks like a bunch of them. That should keep things progressing nicely maybe a weak wave right there. And then the big change getting towards the end of the period, if you focus on the Canadian Arctic, we see the development of what looks like a strong polar vortex. And if we roll it forward towards the end, you can see that really get going. And that could point to a round of very cold weather around the middle of December. Of course, the devil is in the details and the GFS does tend to have a cold bias as we get into the 250, 350 hour time frame, but that will be something to watch that could point towards some very frigid air in the eastern U.S. and we'll have to see how that plays out. A quick check of conditions around the country, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. This is indicative of a subtropical jet effect in the area, a very deep fetch of high level moisture, cirrus and Cirrostratus moving northeastward across Texas, and as we look further out east, that's going to be the tropical fetch down about 5,000 to 10,000 feet. Stratocumulus, like you saw in the opening clip, and that's working its way northward. In the southwestern U.S., an active weather pattern, we've got the Pacific Front working southward, and the Canadian Front, that's it right there. You can see that little cloud line. Those frontal systems, lots of air mass modification back behind them, very warm terrain with very cold low and mid-level air, and that gives us cumuliform clouds and showers. And maybe we can take a quick look at that boundary. 
Yep, there it is. During the springtime, that can be a focus for convection. You can have some thunderstorms, shallow-topped cumulonimbus with enough shear to get some funnel clouds going. However, this is kind of a dry system. Not much moisture back there. Dew points in the 30s and 20s. So that's going to be kind of high-based. So maybe some brief showers, some verga, and not much else. A quiet day in California, some stratus there around Merced. That's what we call Thule fog when it gets thick and low enough. However, across much of the state, ridging, and let's take a look up north. And there we see the next weather system affecting Vancouver Island. You can see the overshoots on this cumulonimbus. Not really producing thunderstorms, but it is producing some showers. And very likely some heavy precip along parts of the coast there. There's a look at the North Plains. We've got cold air advection working down through that part of the country. The main fronts down to the south. And that's basically just a big cold air advection regime. In the northeastern U.S., a dry occluded system moving through Michigan. We're going to need the purple color for that. So that's going to be the occlusion, and then we get into the baroclinic elements further south. So not a whole lot going on in that part of the country. Dry air mass, and you can see the infrared imagery taken over as we move into night. And then for the east coast, we've got extensive cold air, cold advection, stratocumulus offshore. And that's that cold air mass working its way off the coast, picking up moisture from the Gulf Stream and condensing. And those layers are down about one to 2,000 feet, producing closed cell stratocumulus. And that field is very extensive. Looks like one little boundary in there, some little discontinuities, kind of cool there, and some of that flowing into Florida at this hour. And that's a closer look at it. Obviously, a lot of warmth in the Florida peninsula there. So as those elements move inland, initially it's kind of moderately stable, but as it gets that strong heating from beneath, we get the cumuliform clouds developing and possibly a few showers within that. And taking a look at the METAR observations, there's a pretty good temperature dew point spread there. Looks like about 20 degrees. So with that dry air in the low levels, probably not a whole lot of that precip is going to make it to the surface. We can take a look at a model scooty for that area. That'll give us an idea what the column is like. So certainly some instability in the lowest 5,000 feet. That's that cold air feeding onto the coast, destabilizing quite a bit, and looks like a very shallow layer producing very low-topped cumulus, but it's uh, very strongly capped, so just not going to get much vertical development on, on that. It probably looks threatening, but we're probably just not able to squeeze much out of that. The instability layer is just a bit too shallow. So let's take a look at the precip from the GFS over the next week or so. You can see it stacking up there in British Columbia and just piling more rain on top of more rain. And towards the end of next week, it's putting in about 10 to 15 inches of additional precip in the Vancouver area and up into the coastal region. So this certainly is bad news. Some rain across the rest of the U.S., east of the Rockies, certainly dry out west, but east of the Rockies, a few weather systems moving through, so one to two inches, depending on where you are. But I wanted to show you this uh, snow. This is illustrating how we're seeing a pattern change going into December. Not much for the rest of November, but as we get into December, we start to see these tracks coming further south. That's going to be December 5th and 6th. Granted, we are getting way out there. And then you can see a snow track through Texas for the 8th. 
Now, it's probably overdoing that, but that kind of is telling us we need to kind of watch that area for the second week of December. So anyway, that's something to look at and put in your pipe and smoke, and we'll continue to monitor that as we go into next week. No new Patreon donors and nothing in the mailbag, so we'll just go ahead and close it out for now. Hope you all have a great Thanksgiving, and we'll see you back here on Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.